Today we're going to talk about why bruising gin is not a thing. Welcome to Common Man Cocktails. I'm Derek Schomer. You're on the channel that's going to teach you all about cocktail, cocktail creation, flavor, flavor notes, how to best enjoy your cocktails, all muddled with a little bit of humor. Let's talk about bruising gin. A bruise, also known as a contusion, forms because soft tissue has been bumped, typically in your body, like a bruise. Gin doesn't have anything to bruise. If you have soft tissue in your gin, throw it out. It's not good. But that doesn't kill the seriousness of what shaking does versus stirring to your gin. Shannon Stewart, a research scientist for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, does have a good explanation to why we call it bruising. And it really comes down to flavor notes. She did a little article on talesofthecocktail.com which kind of goes through this a little bit. There are three different types of notes, flavor notes, that flavorists, yes, flavorists, it's, it's a real profession, or at least something that's important. In those notes, you're gonna have high notes or top notes, you're gonna have middle notes, you're gonna have low notes or bass notes. Sounds like music, but it works for flavors as well. High notes are your zingy flavors, your citrus zings, dill, cilantro, things that zing in fast and they fade pretty quickly, but they are a key component to, to a lot of the aroma and the initial flavor impact you're gonna get from a meal or a drink. Middle notes are those flavors that, they're not that exciting. It's like, have you, have you ever eaten a carrot? A raw carrot. It tastes like carrot, but it's not exciting. It's just, it's carrot. They don't punch butters, creams, milks, poultry, pasta, potatoes, things with pea. They're extremely important and sometimes can form a backbone of the flavor profile, but they're not the most exciting. Then there are your low notes or your base notes. They tend to have a little bit more of an earthy flavor. Your beans, mushrooms, black pepper, bacon, ginger, chocolate, garlic. I could keep going. There's there's tons of great ones. I like ginger. I like garlic. But I don't like garlic because once it gets on your hands, you can't get it off for days. Bottom line, a good meal or a good cocktail contains a little of all of those notes. That gives you a full flavor profile. You could take anything, Moscow mules, whiskey sours, you've got your you've got your citrus in the whiskey sour. You've also got a little bit of mid-sweetness. Some of that bourbon plays right in the middle note. But those low notes, that's your oak, that's your vanilla. Vanilla is considered a low note. Low notes linger. When you have something with vanilla, it typically lingers for a little while. You take out any of those specific flavors and you have boring. Nobody wants boring in their cocktail. Nobody's gonna pay $12 at the Manhattan bar for a cocktail that tastes like nothing. So how does that play into shaking or straining a gin? Gin has a lot of those three note structures. Unlike vodka, which typically is just a low note type of product, shaking gin brings in a, a lot of aggressive aeration. Guess what? Your middle notes and your top notes those are your most volatile notes. The top notes are the most volatile. If you're gonna lose anything in a cocktail, it's gonna begin at your top notes. And when you start to shake and shake aggressively, those top notes start to dissipate quicker. When you aerate a wine, a lot of the goal is to get those top notes to go away because in a wine, especially red wine, some of those can be very aggressive and, and give it a, a very tart uh, tannin structure that sometimes you just wanna curb out, mute down a little bit to make it taste a little bit, bring in some of those other notes. The same thing happens with egg whites when you're creating a whiskey sour or anything with egg whites. The egg whites attach to some of those tannins and soften the taste, so you're getting a lot more of the bourbon flavor out of it, and some of those tannins are brought down, bringing into that cocktail a nice balance. What are some of the top notes you might be able to find in a gin? Lemongrass, lavender, cilantro, maybe some basil, thyme, herbal qualities. There are a lot of different herbal qualities that come with a gin. It's part of what makes gin, gin. Those middle notes, the next of the volatility scale, could include a little bit more lavender because it kind of hits the top in the middle, pine, juniper, chamomile, cardamom, other subtle flavors that play into a gin can be destroyed or at least muted even further when you start to shake. So what stays around? The low notes. What is the king of a low note? Vodka. So if you want to make your gin, that you probably paid good money for, tastes like a vodka, which is usually a little bit cheaper, then go ahead, you can shake it. Bottom line, shaking destroys some of the flavor nuances of gin. You're blowing off your top notes, you're muting your medium notes, and you're accenting the base notes. You're not bruising anything. You're just making it boring. What you should be saying is don't borify my gin. So let's do a little test. Let's stir gin 45 seconds. Let's shake gin, I don't know, 15 seconds. That should give it about the same amount of dilution. See what it looks like, see how it tastes, see if it makes any difference at all now that we have science. For that, I'm gonna use 
Spear to Heaven. This is a gin that one of our fans sent us from, I believe it's Sweden, uh, organic gin. It has, it's, it's a beautiful gin. It has, I don't know where you can get it in the United States, but it has some beautiful flavors. So let's just do an ounce and a half. Now let's do two. So we got two ounces there and we'll do two ounces in our shaker. Give it a 45 second stir. Strain it out. There were still a few little air bubbles going on in there. So it's not completely without air. Let's shake the next. So one thing you'll notice is they have the same level. I use two ounces in each. That means that the dilution is pretty damn on point because one is not higher than the other. What you will notice is this one could be a little bit colder. What you want to do if you're going to stir is you want to chill your coupe glass ahead of time so that the cold lasts longer. In this case, we're going to drink it pretty quick for this test, so it's not going to matter. But if you were to serve this to somebody and they're going to be sipping on this for 10, 15 minutes, this one's going to stay a lot colder. It's got like a little bit of cardamom. It's got like a sweet herbal smell to it. Almost like a grapefruit citrus. This one is definitely muted down. If anything, I want to almost say it's got like a Sprite, like a, like a sweeter Sprite citrus to it. But you got to dig deep in there. It lost a lot of the herbal qualities. This one definitely has a zingier brightness to it, which I thought was going to be kind of BS. The flavor notes, can you really tell the difference from just the aroma? Now you got to remember, aroma plays a huge part in the sipping experience as well because all that aroma goes into your face. It's strong. This is the way I like my gin martinis. Just gin. This one will have a little bit of a different mouthfeel because of those micro bubbles playing on your tongue. It's going to feel a little bit different, a little bit lighter almost. The stirred has a little bit more of a... Uh, a little bit more of a, a thickness to it, a silkiness to it. This one has better mid-palate flavor, um, a little bit of a juniper flavor, That's that cardamom kind of coming out, and there's almost like a lingering zing. I can't put my mouth on exactly what the zing is. Uh, it tastes almost like a citrus, maybe like a juniper, uh, a, an herbal, fruity component to it. This one actually has more of a pronounced alcohol note. Um, the ethanol comes through there, it's 40 ABV. The ethanol flavor of the shaken one is much more pronounced, which does make sense if it's going to carry through more of the vodka, the vodka-ness. So what we've done is we've kind of removed some of that middle fun. Um, from the taste profile, I can't, definitely there's more of a scent from here. Definitely this one loses some of the scent. When you're tasting it, I'm not really getting too, too much of that uh, top note, but the aroma is there. So when you're looking at it from a presentation, when you're getting your mouth right up to it and it's going into your nasal cavity, you're getting those top notes, mainly right at the start. This guy definitely has more herbal action. This one has more ethanol action. It is. It's more boring. It still brings through some of the base components of the drink, but because the ethanol is being such a big player, it's a little bit of a turnoff. So when you bring this into a standard martini, you still are going to get some of that vermouth draw. But what this test shows you is that the boring factor plays a bigger role. So your gin isn't bruised. There's nothing bruised about this. It's not purple. It's not, there's nothing special outside of the fact that it doesn't look nearly as sexy as this one looks. It looks like a, looks like every other drink. So your gin's not going to bruise. It's just going to get more boring. Why do you have to shake it when you bring juices into it? Because the aeration with juices integrate itself into the alcohol. So you're gonna lock in some of those flavors. Sure, you're gonna lose some of the subtleties to your gin when you're mixing it with orange juice or cranberry juice or grapefruit juice or whatever it happens to be. However, the grapefruit itself is bringing in a new texture, new flavor components in its own top notes. Matter of fact, juice is gonna be primarily top notes. So sometimes to remove some of that excess top note, shaking it is gonna make it more subtle. If you bring a lot of something and you take a portion away, that's not so bad. It's more moderate, more balanced. If you're bringing in something that's already pretty subtle and you're taking half of it away, you have have nothing really left to enjoy. And that is why bruising gin is not a thing. However, shaking pure gin cocktails also shouldn't be a thing. Stir your drinks. Click below, subscribe to the show, check out a couple of the other videos that we've produced, and check out The Craft Cocktail, youtube.com slash The Craft Cocktail, to see more very focused craft cocktails. The first 15 are going to be vodka. The next 15, gin. We're teaching you how to drink.